between sun-soaked beaches, magical islands which feel miles away from civilization, and some pretty gorgeous towns, you can't really go wrong by taking a trip to the French Riviera. We recently spent two dreamy days on the Côte d'Azur, and in this video, we're going to show you the best things to do in Cannes, Ile Saint Marguerite, and Antibes. Welcome to Cannes. We're on the French Riviera, which is known as the Côte d'Azur in French. This area of France is best known for the Cannes Film Festival, though there's plenty more to see and do in the city, as we'll show you today. Tomorrow, we'll take you to Antibes, which is around a 10 minute train ride down the coastline. While many people opt to get their photo taken on the red carpet, which is just around the corner, a hidden gem that you might not know about is the Cannes Walk of Fame. And there's lots of little plaques on the floor from famous people's handprints. If you want to learn more about the surrounding area, then you can also head into the tourist office, which is part of the building, to get leaflets and pamphlets and walking tours. The best way to get around Cannes is undoubtedly on foot, but you can also opt to take the local tourist train if you want a little bit more information. For us, however, it was time to head to the local ferries. The entire front stretch of coastline alongside Cannes, which is known as La Croisette, is currently undergoing an intensive two-year renovation project, which is due to finish between summer and winter of 2025. This is the biggest change of the seafront in over a hundred years but I'm sure it'll be really beautiful when it's all finished. En route to the ferry area we enjoyed gorgeous views of the port in the sun. It may seem a bit strange but one of the best things to do in Cannes is actually to leave the mainland by taking the ferry to a nearby group of islands. The largest of these islands is Ile Saint Marguerite and there are departures throughout the year even in the off season which is when we went. In the winter there's actually no food available on the island so we headed to a local bakery before departure to buy a panini and some other snacks for Ile Saint Marguerite. Once on the ferry, it's a relaxing and smooth 15 minute ferry ride. When it's a blue day outside and the sun is shining, the views of the coastline from the boat are truly spectacular. Welcome to Ile Saint Marguerite. We're just off the coast of Cannes, around a 15 minute ferry ride away, making it one of the easiest day trips from the city. The island is actually one of four islands which make up the archipelago of Lyran. There are two main places to eat on the island, but unfortunately they're seasonal and so only operate during the summer. If you come during the winter months, then you have to bring your own picnic, but it's still very beautiful and very temperate as it's currently the beginning of February and it's currently around 16 degrees outside. Although there are no hotels per se on Ile Saint Marguerite, there are people who live there permanently and so you'll see their houses dotted across the island. As you can see from this sign, there are no trash cans on the island and so you have to bring all of your rubbish home with you. There's evidence of human occupation of the island since at least the 5th century before Common Era. During Roman times, the island was known as Lero for a local deity. The most interesting thing to do on the island is visit the fort. This royal fort actually dates back to 1624 to 1627. Due to its strategic vantage point and the fact that it's kind of hard to escape the island, it's also been used as a prison, most notably for the man in the iron mask during the 17th century. No one actually knows who the man in the iron mask was and there were even theories about who he was prior to his death at the end of the 18th century. One of the most popular theories is that he was actually a twin brother of Louis XIV, i.e. the Sun King. However, this is quite implausible and it's probably actually that he was a political prisoner. All that we know is that he was literally forced to wear an iron mask for at least 11 years. The fort has now been transformed into a museum that you can pay a few euros to visit. And from the first outlook here, we can see as far away as the snow-capped Alps. The museum complex has a few things of interest, but most of the points of intrigue are housed within a central building that you won't be able to miss as it's the largest building still standing within the fort today. Here, you can see an exhibit all about the man in the iron mask, learn more about the military history of the fort, and more interestingly still, learn about the Roman history of Ile Saint Marguerite. To be honest, my favourite part of the museum was heading into the remains of a Roman cistern, 
where you can learn all sorts of archaeological facts about the island and see plenty of archaeological remains. All in all, you need around half an hour to explore the museum, but do be aware that in a very French fashion, the museum closes at lunchtime for around an hour. After you've seen the museum exhibitions, you can wander around the rest of the fort, which you will need your entry ticket to get to. To be honest, this area is quite overrun, but you can see the remains of a church and a Huguenot cemetery and kind of see the old fortifications. Apart from visiting the fort, one of the most popular things to do on the island is to go on a hike. There are actually 22 kilometers worth of hiking trails dotted across this tiny island and so you'll be spoiled for choice. There are a few cemeteries on Ile Sainte Marguerite. The one we visited was for local residents. However, there are two others on the island, including one which is the final resting place of 3,000 people from North Africa who were prisoners on the island, and one for French soldiers who fought in the Crimean War, as the island was used as a sanatorium for injured soldiers during the 19th century. From the southern shoreline of Ile Sainte Marguerite, you can see the second largest island in the archipelago, and that is Ile Saint Honoré. This island is best known for its abbey. It's so peaceful and tranquil here that it's hard to believe that we're only 15 minutes away from Cannes. I particularly love all of the aquamarine waters, which makes it feel truly like a Mediterranean destination. There are a number of beaches on the island, but one of the coolest things that you can do related to the water is go to an eco-museum by swimming. And I'm going to read to you what the sign says. The sculptures lie 84 to 132 meters from the shore and are at a depth of three to five meters so that any swimmer with a mask and snorkel can see them. Free of charge and protected by a ban on chips anchoring. They're honestly very cool apparently, but obviously it's February, so we're not gonna go swim and see them today. It feels very French to have this non-smoking sign in the middle of the countryside. Though I'd probably recommend spending a full day on Ile Saint Marguerite, as we have plenty of other things to see and do in Cannes, it was time to return to the mainland. There's a ferry around once an hour and so it's easy to get back, but I have no idea what happens if you miss the last ferry of the day. Once back in Cannes, it was time for a quick coffee break before we started our next adventure. We're now making our way up the hill which overlooks the rest of Cannes. This area is known as Le Souquet and it's the oldest district in the city. There's a castle here at the very top of the hill as well as a historic church. The greatest reward of making it all the way up the steps is this amazing view of Cannes. However, there are a few other things to do when you get to the top, including a museum and a church which dates back 500 years. The church was built between the 15 and 1600s, though wasn't completed until 1627. It has a rather plain facade, but I think you'll find the ornate interior is a little more interesting, and it even has an organ from Pavia. You can even climb the ramparts on the opposite side of the church for an even better view of the other side of the city. Once you've explored everything that there is to do at the top of the hill here in Le Souquet, you want to make your way back down the steps to reach what is probably my favorite area to explore, and that is La Croisette, the bit that's not currently being renovated, and that's along the seafront. There's a promenade where you can see all of the beach clubs, enjoy the views of the sea, and see lots of cute cafes. Walking through the city at golden hour feels like a completely different experience to during the day. Everything is bathed in a golden glow and you won't want to miss it during your time in Cannes. The modern part of Cannes is almost completely pedestrianized and is full of commercial shops which you would expect to find on any kind of high street throughout France. As you head further out of town, you'll find more and more luxury shops lining the area along the seafront. This is my favorite area of La Croisette and is where you can find lots of free to sit on blue chairs lining the boardwalk.
As Cannes is such a popular city for events, there's no shortage of accommodation, but you'll definitely want to book something earlier rather than later to secure a good place to stay. We stayed in a small studio in this former hotel turned apartment block and loved that we could see the sea, even if it was far away, from our little balcony. Now, I have to admit that you haven't really seen Cannes if you haven't experienced its nightlife. We loved going out for dinner in one of the most popular venues in town, and then we headed out for some drinks at another bar afterwards. If you have more than a single day in Cannes, it definitely makes sense to use as a base to explore the wider region, as I personally believe that the best of the French Riviera is outside of Cannes. Sorry to say that. <laughs> A picture-perfect town on the French Riviera, Antibes is a dreamy escape from the hustle and bustle of busy modern-day life, and is just a 10-minute train ride away from Cannes. A pastel-hued maze of cobbled medieval streets, there are also beaches to relax on and even an impressive fort to explore. To be honest, one of the best things to do is simply to stroll around and allow the town to reveal itself to you. It's mainly pedestrian, so you'll need to wear comfortable shoes. With this being said, I'll point out some highlights now. If you're looking to pick up a souvenir or just want to go for a little bit of shopping, then Rue James Close is definitely the place to go to. There's so many independent boutiques along here selling everything from local foodstuffs to children's clothes and even books. Nomad's Coffee has the best specialty coffee in town. One of the best ways to discover local life in southern France is to head to the market. The most classic market is the daily Provencal produce market, which sells all sorts of fresh fruits, vegetables, local cheeses from Tuesday through to Sunday. Nearby, you'll find the town hall. Of course, thanks to its position alongside the coastline, Antibes also has its very own port. One of the most beautiful places to visit in town is undoubtedly the Antibes Cathedral. Free to visit and open on a daily basis, there has been a place of worship on site since at least the 5th century, though the building you see today was constructed in an Italian style during the 18th century. Right next door, there's a museum dedicated to Picasso. If I'm honest, the absolute best thing to do in Antibes is to walk along the seafront. The sea-facing promenade has recently undergone an intensive restoration and is really beautiful to stroll along, admire the architecture and view the sea views. And if you've made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more travel movies. See you next time. Bye. Wait, what did I say already?